uh, of just just a few weeks ago. And because the whole book of Ephesians is about growing up in Jesus, about maturing uh, in our Christian walk. And so this 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 prophetic word uh, is is what the Lord gave to us on June the 5th. And I'm going to just it's very short it says I have enduring love for my people, says the Lord. I have waited and waited for them to become the people that are called by my name. I have waited for them to walk in my presence. I have waited for them to become lights in this world. I have waited, says the Lord, for them to overcome, to be overcomers and more than conquerors. I desire for them to be who I am in the earth, to represent me, and to be my ambassadors, says the Lord. Seek me early and you will find me. As I see your hearts expand and enlarge for the things of the spirit, I will pour into your hearts what I want you to say and do. Some of the thoughts that I have for my people are more than they can receive at this time, but I am choosing you to hold on to my treasures and to bring them forth to the people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I believe that is for every one of us that the Lord wants to use all of us, but we have to grow up in order for him to, to be useful in the kingdom of God. And so, for instance, babies are wonderful, like little baby Luke. We can't call him baby anymore. We we need to call him, I guess, Master Luke. Uh, but he is he's growing, he's maturing, he's he's walking. Hallelujah! And the Lord wants us to mature and be who we are supposed to be in the earth. Hallelujah! <clears throat> and all of us have to do that. We have to do that in the physical realm, in the natural realm. Uh, but also we do it in our spiritual walk in the kingdom of God. So, I, and, and I will give you opportunity to share, uh, if you would, would like to, about what you have uh, read in Ephesians, the book of Ephesians and what um, got your attention and what can what you're going to hold on to uh, from that book um and so i would like to start uh, with a foundation for this uh for this message tonight and this uh ephesians uh chapter 4 verses 14 and 15 now i'm going to give quite a few scriptures tonight but these scriptures you can go back uh, tomorrow when it's on YouTube, if you don't get them to, tonight, but I'm going to give a lot of scriptures tonight. Ephesians 4 verses 14 and 15. Then we are no longer infants, whew, no longer children, tossed back and forth by every wave or doctrine and blown here and there by teaching and the, the, the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitfulness. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become every respectful, the mature body, the mature body, because each one of us are part of the body, into the head, which is Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So Jesus is the head of the body, but we are parts of the body. George is a part of the body. Wendy is a part of the body. Sharon is a part of the body. We're all different parts and we have different jobs to do. Hallelujah. So it says that we're not going to be infants anymore. Now, uh, a child, um, they can be picked up and moved easily from place to place. But it's harder to move an adult. Isn't that right? 
It's harder to pick up Brother Fred and move him from place to place. And so we that shows me that we are to grow into uh, being stable and not tossed to and fro by everything that we hear or everything that's going on around us, that we are stable uh, and steadfast uh, with the word of God. Hallelujah. And then 1 Corinthians 13, verses 11 and 13, it says that when I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man or became mature, I put the childish ways behind me. Oh, hallelujah. And so this is a, this is a, uh, I don't want to say a sign. This is a indication that we are maturing is that when we put our childish thoughts behind us, when we're not easily um, moved by situations, that we're not easily moved by words that are spoken to us, uh, we don't get, we, we don't go into a rage. We don't uh, try to fight back or defend ourselves. We are, we are mature. We're getting, uh, we're growing up, growing up in, in the word. So we're no longer a child. And then in verse 12, it says, that was verse 11, verse 12 but now we see only a reflection as in the mirror. Then we shall see face to face. When we become mature, we're going to see face to face. What does that mean? Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. This means you're going to know who you are in, in Christ Jesus. Do you know who you are tonight? Do you know what your function is? In, in the body of Christ. And then verse 13, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Now, it is love that helps us to mature. All of these help, faith helps, hope helps, but love is the greatest of all of these. And there's one thing that's required of any of us in any situation. Here's the answer. What's the answer to my, my situation? Is that one thing is required of you, and that is that you love. You love with God's unconditional love. That's the answer. That's the answer for my, my situation is that I walk in the love of God. Hallelujah. I walk in the love with my family. I walk in the love with my coworkers. I walk in the love with, with uh, people that have my enemies. Uh, I, I walk in love. That, that's the answer right there. And, and we know that we're maturing is when we can love our enemies. And we can love those that say, evil things against us or do evil things to us. We know that we're maturing when we can, we can love. Hallelujah. And uh, that is, uh, I sent a message to a young man that we give covering to a minister. And I said, the Lord is perfecting your love walk because there's been some situations in his marriage and in his ministry. And I said, the Lord is perfecting your love walk. And, and that's, that's maturity. You know, when we come through a situation and we know that we have done our part and our part, what is our part? It's to love. That's your part. Hallelujah. You say, well, what am I supposed to do about this situation? Love. That's the answer. That's the answer right there. Okay, and then Luke 2, 40, it says, and the child grew, this was Jesus. 
Jesus had to grow spiritually just like any of us have to grow spiritually. Because he came to earth, he laid down his glory. He laid down his majesty. He laid down who he was. Because see, he was up there with the father. But when he came to earth, he came as a child, as a baby, and he had to grow. He had to grow physically. He had to grow mentally. He had to grow spiritually, just like you and I are working on all of that right now. Why did the Lord say, I want you to read the book of Ephesians? It's because he wants his people. He's waiting. That's what this word just said. I'm waiting for my people to walk in maturity. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it says in Luke 2, 40, about Jesus. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom. And the grace of God was upon him. And that's you and I. Right there. We're growing. We're getting stronger. Praise the name of Jesus. And we're being filled with his wisdom. And the grace of God is upon us. We would not be standing today if it wasn't for the grace of God. Right. It says that we stand by the grace of God. It says that we are saved by the grace of God. Woo, hallelujah. It was the same with Jesus. He had to grow. He had to become mature. Woo, praise the name of Jesus. It says uh, in 2 Peter uh, uh, 3.15, I'm still laying foundation here. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. This is 2 Peter 3.15. We have to, to know that God is patient with us as we grow and as we mature. He gives us strength to do the things that we need to do and to grow. Hallelujah. Now, that was all in the first chapter, but also in the first chapter, and, and tonight I'm going to be speaking prophetically over you, over this group. So I'm glad that you've joined us tonight. I believe that this is a very critical message for us to go forward with this, with this group. And in all of our lives that we go forward in the Lord. But in chapter one of Ephesians, he prays a prayer. He prays a prayer for the people and he speaks over the people prophetically through this prayer. It's Ephesians 1, 17 through 19. It says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, our glorious father, may give you, and I'm speaking over you right now, the, wis the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Hallelujah. I speak that over you right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I, and then verse 18, I pray that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope in which he has called you that you may know the riches of his glory, his inheritance for you. Hallelujah. And then in verse 19, that you will know his incredible, hallelujah, his incomparable great power for you who believe. So he has, I have prayed and I've spoken over you that you will, 
God will reveal himself to you. Hallelujah. 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 Not just as your savior, but he will reveal who he really is. <laughs> Praise God. God is so much more than, I mean, savior is wonderful. Yes. He's our redeemer. That's glorious. But he is so much more. And he wants to reveal himself to you. He wants to make himself known to you. And that's what I've spoken of you. And then I've spoken that the eyes of your understanding will see not only who he is, but who you are. Woo! Hallelujah. That each one of you will know who you are. Praise the name of Jesus. I know who I am in Christ Jesus. You know, the enemy cannot come to me and say, well, you can't do this or you can't do that. Why? Because I know I can because of who is in me. You know, there's a saying that, that's out there on these little plaques and it says they whispered to her that she cannot withstand the storm. But she whispers back, I am the storm. Hallelujah. So when you know who you are in Christ Jesus, the enemy cannot come and bring anxiety and sickness and discouragement and oppression and depression. He can't do that to you Hallelujah. anymore. Hallelujah. 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 And then I have prayed over you that you will not only experience his power, but you'll walk in his power. You'll walk in the Holy Ghost. That's what I'm really talking about here. That you'll walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You will not, even though you your flesh wants to get angry, you're not going to do that because you're walking in the spirit. Hallelujah. And it says that the Spirit will constrain us. The Spirit will let us walk in that love. Hallelujah. So powerful. So powerful. That's chapter one. Let's move on. Let's move on to chapter two. Hallelujah. In chapter two, what I gleaned, do you know what gleaning is? Ruth went into the fields of Boaz and she began to glean from the word of God. That's what I wanted you to do when you went through Ephesians. I wanted you to, to glean from each chapter what the Lord wanted you to glean. Well, from chapter two, this is what I received from the Holy Spirit. And that was, he shows us our position in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. He shows us our position. Hallelujah. No more a worm. You're not a worm anymore. You're not a worm. What are you? You're a butterfly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've broken through the cocoon and now you are free. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm Hallelujah. still in the book, 2 Hallelujah. Corinthians 5, 17. Hallelujah. Now you are a new creature. Praise the name of Jesus. And it says in the very next verse, and all things are of God. Hallelujah. No longer is Wendy, Wendy. No longer is Joy, Joy. No longer is Lucy, Lucy. No longer is Freddie, Freddie. Who are we? We are the children of the Most High God. Hallelujah. And it says in Ephesians 2, verse 2, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world, you lived in your flesh and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air. You followed after the, the things of the, of the enemy. It says no longer do you do that. The spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. But then let's go on Ephesians 2, 6. But God has raised us up with Christ and has seated us with Hallelujah. him Hallelujah. in heavenly places Amen. Amen. in Christ Jesus. Amen. So Amen. no longer are you 
looking up to God and begging God to answer your prayers. No, you're looking down upon your problems. Whoo, hallelujah, from a heavenly perspective, from God's perspective. That's where you are. You're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's the supernatural realm. That's the spirit realm. We're to walk in the spirit and we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh anymore. Amen. Hallelujah. See, you can either walk in the spirit or you can walk in the flesh. And it says to be carnally minded. I mean, Romans 8, carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But see, the enemy comes at your mind, at your thoughts, so that so that he can create. Well, he doesn't have the power to create. So that he can plant thoughts of, of worry, thoughts of what if. What if this happens? And what if that happens? And I lived that way for a long time. Even after I was a Christian, even after I was a Christian, and it led to depression, it led to oppression, and it led to three attempts of a suicide. Now, so I am speaking from not only from where I stand in the Lord, but I'm speaking to you from experience. In what I have experienced, the enemy tries to do. He tries to come and steal, kill, and destroy you. And he wants to destroy your spirit. That's what he wants to destroy. That's where your life is. Your life is not in your in your blood and your muscles and your in this outer man. Your life is in your spirit. Hallelujah. That's why people can. I have seen people come back into this world that the doctors said, oh, well, they're going to die. There's no way there that they can get out of this. There's no way they're going to die. And they called in all the family and bingo. They turn around. They set up in the hospital bed. They get out. They go home and they live another 10 years. Why? It's because if the enemy cannot get to your, your spirit, he cannot get to your will unless you give it to him. Now, if you give it up, and I've heard people say, well, I just can't take it anymore. And then they go on to be with the Lord. I've heard them say, well, I think it's my time, so I'm going to go on. And there was this man that I went to the hospital uh, four different times. And when they said he was dying and four different times, I saw that man walk out of the hospital and go home. And so one day they called me and they said, uh, Sister Sherry, um, uh, our dad wants to speak to you. And this was Papa Wilson. They, he wants to speak to you. And I said, okay. So it was about 20 miles away. I got in the car. I drove to his house. I went in to, to see him. And he said, um, Sister Sherry, today Jesus came and visited me and said that he was ready to, to, uh, to take me to the other side. He said, but I wanted to check with you first and to see if it would be okay with you if I go on. He wanted to ask, he wanted to, to get my approval for him to go and be with Jesus. I said, well, Papa Wilson, what do you want to do? And he says, well, I think I want to go this time. And I said, well, you go right ahead. You go right ahead. And we prayed together and I gave him a big hug and I walked out of that room and two hours later, he was gone on to be with Jesus, but it was his will to do that. Do you see that? It was, he said, I want to go on. 
The other four times he didn't want to go. The enemy wanted him to go, but he didn't want to go. And so he said, no, I don't want to go. And so until you give up your will, the enemy can't do anything to you. Whew, that's good. I don't know about you, but I'm receiving from this message tonight. The enemy cannot do anything to us unless we say, go ahead. Whew, that's good, Sherry. Mm -mm -mm. That is so good, Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. So it says here that we're raised up. So chapter two is about our position in the Lord. Chapter, chapter, um, no, that was chapter three. Yeah. Chapter four is all about our root system. It's all about our roots. See, a plant and you're a tree. You're a tree of righteousness. Isn't that what it says in Psalms chapter one? That we are trees of righteousness. So we have a root system. So our roots need to go down deep, down deep, down deep in the word of God. Ephesians 3, 16 through 20. And it says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. Inside of you, that's where your root system is. In your spirit, man, hallelujah. And you have to feed your spirit. What are you feeding your spirit? Are you feeding your spirit faith, which is the word of God? Are you feeding him uh, good things to eat on? Hallelujah. Woo. Praise the name of Jesus. In verse 17, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you be rooted and grounded in what? Love. L-O-V-E, love. Did I say that one thing is required of all of us, and is that's love, and that's 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 what you're that's what you're feeding your root system, and your root system is growing in that love. Oh, hallelujah! It says that you may have power together with all the Lord's holy people. To know how wide and long and high and deep the love of Jesus is. And to know this love that goes past knowledge. It goes past your, your human thinking. Yes, yes. That you may be filled with the fullness of the Lord. Now we're talking about maturity here. We're talking about being full of God. Hallelujah. I want my container filled up. I want more and more of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can have as much of him as you want. Hallelujah. And I want everything he has. Hallelujah. 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 Now to him who is able to do, and I love this scripture right here. It's one of my favorite scriptures, Ephesians 3.20. He's able to do more than you ask and more than you can imagine according to the power that works in you. Hallelujah. That's why every single person, every child of God needs to be baptized in the Holy Spirit Hallelujah. and fire because that opens up. Remember that word that says he wants us to expand in our spirit, man. He wants us to to enlarge, hallelujah, he wants us to enlarge our, our spirit. The, every time you pray in tongues, it enlarges your spirit, man. And that way, more of the word can go in. More of God can go in. Oh, I love it. Hallelujah. So, more power. He can do more in your life and in your family and in your friends and in your church congregation. He can do more in your ministry when you have power in you. The more power is in you, 
the more God can do. Hallelujah. 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 That's good, Sherry. Hallelujah. He says, my God can do anything. Anything, anything. My God can do anything. But he can do anything according to the power that works in all of us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want him to be able to do more through me. I want him to be able to help people through me. I want him to be able to give more through me. I want him to be able to uh, to bring down the the strongholds of the enemy uh, with with me. Hallelujah. Yeah. Okay. Now let's go to chapter five. Praise the name of Jesus. And this is all about walking in Jesus. No longer are we a baby. No longer are we crawling around and trying to pull up on things and and uh, and and hanging on to our 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 cribs. No, this is in chapter five is about walking in Jesus. It says, as a prisoner of the Lord, this is still in Ephesians four one through three. But this is my fourth point right here, walking in Jesus. I urge you to live a life worthy of your calling. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to bring unity in the spirit. So that's your job. When there is an argument going on, what's your job? Is to bring peace and unity. That's your job. Whether you're in the workplace, whether you're with your family, whether you're what wherever you are, that's that is part of your maturity is to bring unity of the spirit and peace. And then in Ephesians 4, he gave the fivefold, this is what's called the fivefold ministry gifts. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And he gave those individuals to us, that's Ephesians 4, 11 through 13, to equip us. See, that's part of why we continue to do these Tuesday night Bible studies is to help equip you for the work that God has called you to do. That's part of our job. Hey, baby, look. There we is. <laughs> oh, praise the name of Jesus. For the work of the ministry, for the edifying or building up of the body of Christ. And so... The Lord knew that we needed help to mature. And these, these ministry gifts will help us to mature. For instance, we um, the person who gives us uh, covering and oversight in the ministry, one of them is uh, a prophet of God. He lives in Oklahoma. The other one is an apostle, the apostle to Africa. Uh, and has been for 25 years, uh, is is also, he gives us covering and in the ministry, and he lives in Texas. And they, they have taught us so many things. And so as we learn from these, these gifts, these ministry gifts, then we, we can grow. We begin to grow. If you have not grown since you accepted Jesus as Savior and Lord, then this, this message, please take hold of it. Hallelujah. Because it's not the end. Salvation is not the end. That's why Brother Fred and I could not sit in a congregation where every, every Sunday they, they gave a message 
oh, you dirty sinner, you need Jesus. We had already accepted Jesus when he was 13, when I was nine. We accepted Jesus as our Lord and we needed to grow. We needed to grow. Well, you grow by, by the food that you put in, that you put in your spirit. Hallelujah. So I am saying to you that it's time for all of us to mature. Now, in Ephesians chapter 5, this point, number 6, is, is being imitators of God. We're to imitate him. We're to imitate him. I taught, um, was it two weeks ago, I taught on uh, being, our words being creative and having creative power in, in our tongue because God is a creator and we can create uh, just like he can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're to imitate him. And it says Ephesians 5 verses 1 and 2, follow God's example as dear children walk in the way of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself for us a sweet smelling fragrance have you ever smelt the Lord it's sweeter than any rose that you've ever smelt I've smelt it three times during my Christian walk and that I, I'll never forget that smell. And I knew that the Lord was there. And that smell was so sweet, so sweet. And it says that when we walk in love, we become that, that fragrance. We smell just like a rose to people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then Ephesians 5, 8. For you were once in darkness, but now you've become the children of light. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. I'm talking about being an imitator of God. That's to be a sweet smelling uh, fragrance to people and also to be a light. Showing them this is the way. This is the way of light. This is the way. You will not stumble. You will not fall. You will not be in the darkness any longer. Hallelujah. That's that's one of our responsibilities. Then Ephesians 5.15. I'm bringing this to a close here. Be very careful now that you live not unwisely, but you live with wisdom. And remember what I spoke over you. I, I spoke it prophetically over you that you would receive revelation of who Jesus is Hallelujah. and also that you would have enlightenment and that you would have wisdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, also in Ephesians 5, we have the concept of submission. And to some people, submission is, is a word that has a negative uh, meaning to it or connotation to it. But submission is beautiful. Submission is covering. And as we submit one to another, as I submit to Brother Fred, as he submits to me, we cover each other. And as I submit to the Lord, he covers me. Oh, hallelujah. To me, submission is a beautiful concept. It's a protective concept. And it gives you freedom. Freedom from the enemy. Freedom from negative things that would try to come and, and penetrate uh, your thinking or penetrate your emotions, penetrate your body. And so then it starts talking about wives, submit yourselves to your husband. You know, and this word submission has also been taken by many 
and used as a weapon to force people to obey. Mm, 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 mm. I hope somebody wrote that down because I've never said that before. But that's what they use it for. They use it, you know, uh, to 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 beat people over the head and say, okay, you're my child, you've got to submit. You're my wife, you've got to submit. Uh, that's what the word of God says. Wives, submit yourself unto your husband. But then if you read on down, it says husbands, husbands love your wives. Did you know that that God looks down upon a marriage? And I'm just going to use Brother Fred and I as an example here. What he says to me and what he does to me directly affects what God thinks of him. And, and, and also, let's say we're in disagreement about something. I quickly come into, into agreement with Brother Fred because I know that if he is wrong, that he is accountable. He is accountable. He will give an account to Jesus if he makes the wrong decision. And so I just quickly come under his covering. I run under his covering. Hallelujah. I, I don't give up any of myself by doing that. Some people say, well, you know, you're giving up your identity and you're giving up your freedom and blah, 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 blah. All of that is garbage. Submission is covering and protection for all of us. That's why it says, submit yourself unto God. A lot, a lot of people just do the last part of the scripture. Resist the devil and he shall flee from you. Try that sometime because it doesn't work. Now listen to me. Because they leave out the very first part of that scripture, which says, submit yourself unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. That's the way the scripture reads. And so when we submit unto God, what do we do? We come under his covering. We come under his protection. Hallelujah. And then the enemy does not have any way to get to us. Woo! Hallelujah. I love that. Hallelujah. Submission is a great and powerful word. And so the rest of Ephesians 5 is about submission and submitting one to another and order. And order. God's divine order. God's divine order is this right here. And if you get this out of order, then you go into a mess. That's when struggles begin. When 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 a family is out of order, when a marriage is out of order, when you're out of order uh, in, in, your, in your whole life. But here's the order. God's order. It's your relationship to God is first. Second is your relationship with your spouse. Husband to wife, wife to husband. Thirdly is your relationship with your family with your children, then your job, and then ministry. So ministry is down the road. And when people get ministry before God or ministry before their marriage, then it ends up in divorce. Our ministry before children. Our ministry before children, then you get bitterness that rises up and then you get anger that rises up right now we're dealing with two families two marriages that are struggling that the enemy has been able to come in and begin to destroy that marriage why because it is out of their lives are out of order 
They've gotten out of order. So chapter 5 of Ephesians is all about putting things back in order. Where they need to be. Spiritually. Whew, hallelujah. There's a lot of quietness out there. And then in Ephesians 5, 27, we see him talking about the glorious church coming. Oh, here comes the glorious church. And Jesus is coming back for a glorious church. Amen. Hallelujah. Why do you want to mature? Is so that you can be part of that glorious church. Hallelujah. Why do you want to know more about the Lord? So that you can be part of the glorious church. Hallelujah. Why do you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit? So you can be part of what God is doing. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, all of Ephesians 1 through 6, 1 through four. One through five, hallelujah, is maturing us, getting us ready. Woo, hallelujah, getting us ready for what? To fight. Chapter six, finally, brethren, finally, brethren, hallelujah, be strong in the Lord. This is my last point, that you're ready to fight. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the in the power of his might. Put on the full armor of God that you may that, that you might withstand against the evil one. Hallelujah. For our struggle, now listen to this, because some of you've been struggling, but you've been struggling with flesh and blood, even with yourself. We do not struggle with flesh and blood. Did you know that that's what anxiety is? Did you know that that's what panic attacks are? Did you know that that's what worry and doubt and unbelief is? Is that you're struggling with flesh and blood yourself? Ooh, that's what depression is. That's good. Uh -huh, that's good. <laughs> Lord, hallelujah. Please forgive us, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, I repent right now for struggling with my own flesh. Amen. For we do not struggle with flesh and blood, but with rulers, authorities, wickedness, and powers of the dark world and against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Therefore, put on the full armor of God. Hallelujah. We're not going to go over. This is not a spiritual warfare message, but let me tell you, all of this maturity is getting you ready to fight. Getting you ready to fight the good fight of faith, hallelujah, that will keep you going until it's time for you to go to the other side. You know, it's not time yet for George to go to the other side. It's not time for Sharon to go to the other side right now. Hallelujah. But we're getting ready. And we're fighting the good fight of faith. Hallelujah. And the more mature you are in the Lord, the better warrior you are. The better warrior you are. You know how to fight. Hallelujah. And we're not going to go over all the different parts except for the very last one. The very last one. The last piece of the armor is prayer. Pray, it says. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And the more mature you are, you know how to pray. You know what to pray. You know when to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians 6, 17 says, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit which is the word of God. You know, another thing I see in chapter six is about obedience. And I'm going to open this up.